Very good afternoon and welcome back to the business end of the Winmax Breaks Ashley Forest Rally Sprint here in North Canterbury. Sun just uh, going behind the clouds a little bit, but it's still a glorious day here in North Canterbury for the running of the Ashley Forest Rally Sprint. Uh, as the con elimination rounds continue this afternoon, uh, we next have the 0-1300cc top three final and the top three fastest cars in that class, John O'Taylor, Chris Herdman and Peter Murch. And it was a very hotly contested class, uh, like they all are, and um, it's great to see that uh, these three guys will chase it out for the final. In fact, they all ended up doing 1 minute 15s, except for John O'Taylor, we put in a 1.14.71, but not... Uh, in the last run so he's the one that's recorded the fastest time so far but very very close between these 0 to 1300 cc competitors after the top three in that class run off to determine the class placings we then go to the top 16 elimination round and we can tell you that uh, the cars that have made it to the top 16 going from the bottom to the top Chris Hay, Michael Tom Scott Jones, Corey McCaskill, Jeff Judd, Jason Clark, Richard Bateman, Matt Summerfield, Sheldon Bell, Sean Haggerty, Garrett Thomas, Graham Bajering, Trevor Crowe, Neil Webb, Alistair McRae and Hayden Patton. If you've just joined us here on the live streaming coverage this afternoon, uh, the big news out of the top 13 elimination was the fact that um, Sloan Cox, who is the current record holder here on the course for the 54.96, spun the car on the way up the hill. By the time he gathered it up, got it going again, and completed the run, he ended up doing a 1 minute 13, which was way outside the elimination time required for him to be able to continue on. So such is the nature of this elimination sport, that if you can't keep putting in the times to stay in, the, the top class, then you are eliminated and it's time to go home. So it is a shame to see Sloane Cox not uh, fighting out the 16, the four, uh, the eight and the four. But um, that's the way it goes, Lindsay, and that's the, uh, that's the name of rally sprinting. The name of the game. Yep, she's all, all on there. The business end, it's the money end, so to speak, now. Just while we wait for our first of our competitors to come up to the start line for the first of the class runoffs this afternoon in the 0 to 1300 CC class, I'd like to once again thank the good folk at Wild Trailers for providing us with the fantastic new horse float to be our base for the Momac production crew this afternoon. It's the point of our commentary position as well. And as we've mentioned, if you are in the market for a horse float, I would like to see just the magnificent uh, build of these uh, trailers. You're most welcome to come along and have a nosy through as we've had one or two folk do so already. They are built in Flaxton Road in Rung Europe, wild trailers, and they really do stand out with their integrated uh, hot dip galvanised chassis, aluminium floors, uh, quality Dunlop tyres and nice alloy wheels on this. I wouldn't mind taking those off and swapping them for the car, actually, Lindsay, but uh, very, very nice looking uh, trailer. I wouldn't recommend it, Grant. <laughs> so the Wild Trailers, thank you very much. You can also go online and have a look at their fine product, Wild Trailers. .co.nz I've got to endorse that this is the nicest horse trailer I've ever seen <laughs> beautiful <laughs> horses for courses it suits horses for courses for, oh yeah, I, I was so concerned this morning when we arrived that uh, I thought oh goodness me I hope we, haven't, we don't find horses inside here now <laughs> with the hay bales close by anything could have happened well that's, that's dead right <laughs> And also a special mention to our live streaming sponsors because without them, this live streaming from the Momac production crew would not be going out around New Zealand and out around the world. So thanks to Winmax Brake Pads, the overall sponsors of the Ashley Forest Rally Sprint for this year, the Magnum Automotive Group in Christchurch and Dunedin, Automotive Import Parts from Christchurch, 
Carter's Tire Service in Rangiora and Britta Safety in Christchurch for supporting our live streaming coverage today. And we talk about the coverage going around New Zealand and around the world. And uh, nice, Lindsay, to see that uh, your, your, your grandchild has spotted you on, <laughs> on live television all the way over in the USA. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> And sent me a photograph of, of us interviewing Steve Murphy, Grant. <laughs> so there we are. From the TV set. So there you go. <laughs> so as we mentioned, the 0-1300cc class is the first of the runoffs that will start the uh, this part of the afternoon's competition. And it's John O'Taylor, Chris Herdman and Peter Murch uh, all in their Toyotas. The only difference is that John O'Taylor has the eye... Uh, the Hibuza powered engine and his with the six speed sequential gearbox a gear for every need to get yeah, up this well, mountain uh, yes I can say it's almost oh, I don't know the word cheating but it seems that <laughs> he has a, a real advantage over the other two really but in saying that those other two have, have, have been extremely competitive all weekend so and as we know with poor old Sloan Cox it's only one little error and it's all over so um, yeah it's all go and whatever these guys would be pretty wrapped they've got a podium and you know for this event it does it does mean a lot so the first car comes up to the line for the 0 to 13 cc class runoff and this is peter birch and the toyota starlet and the toyota starlet has the suzuki twin cam engine it's a 1300 cc swift motor it was built by mike tall And Pete's best result so far was third in class last year. And at the moment he's currently third in class, so he wants to see if he can better Chris Herdman and John o. Taylor's time to take out a better trophy. But Peter Murch on the start line in car number 55, ready for the runoff, the sudden death runoff this afternoon. The fastest to complete the course of these three cars deemed the winner of the class, class one. So, Pete's getting ready to set the little starlet flying up the course. Launched up the course. <laughs> He's about to be launched up the course. That's the one. Uh, well, unfortunately, he made a slight error coming out of the heaven, I believe, and uh, that's it. It's day done and dusted. It's the and also, uh, in the uh, 1300 so class this so year, the, um, the Coombs Cup off. was put up for the first so newcomer. And the fastest the newcomer the in that class, so huge, huge we're not quite ready. Peter Murch has been told to cut the engine, yeah. and uh, this, not yeah, sure what, what the issue is. Fabulous to see such a big crowd here for the Winmax brake pads Ashley Forest Rally Sprint. The crowds have been streaming up the hill through the forest to the vantage points. Up at the top of the hairpin, they've got the barbecue going. The uh, uh, the coffee is the coffee is flowing up there, and uh, it's a uh, a great day here in North Canterbury. So just uh, running through the program for the remainder of today's competition. As we said, the North of 1300cc top three final. Then we go down to the top 16 elimination. Of course, only eight of those cars will continue on. But while they get themselves ready for their next run, then the 1301 to 1600cc top three will have their runoff. And then the two-wheel drive classic top three final, the top four elimination, then the two-wheel drive unlimited top three final, the top two, and then we see who takes away the Ashley Forest Rally Trophy for 2018. So just waiting for the course to be cleared so we can set underway 
for the first of our class <coughs> runoffs this afternoon. You know the old saying in these classes, particularly, oh, we're not we're not racing for sheep stations, but they are racing for the honour of the trophy in, in this class, and it means a lot. It does. And it's always good that the the classes are recognised for what they are. Oh, it's it made the event. There was a time there when it almost there was nothing for them. It was purely, and you can sense that. Well, what what was the point of coming to do it? Paying paying your money, and you know. That's right. So the 0 to 1300 cc elimination is underway. The final, with Peter Meech the first on the court, car 55 in his toy Suzuki. He says because it's Suzuki powered Toyota Starlet. Third in class last year, as we mentioned, he wants to see whether he can go better than that this year. He also finished fourth in class in the recent Hamna Forest Rally. The 1300. Suzuki twin cam engine inside the Toyota Starlet to make sure it remains as a contender in the 0 2 1300cc class. So we wait for Pete to get up to the hairpin. Forty-seven eight three to the Heller hairpin, and Pete is. Launching the car down the hill now for what will be his final run today. He just wants to make sure that he gets the absolute maximum out of it this this run. Through the finish line goes Pete Meech. So we wait for Pete's time to be called. One sixteen nine four. One sixteen nine four. Nope. I don't think that will be enough. He's done a second less than that. Has he not? He does. Grant? He has. He's doing in the one fifteen. So. Yeah. Have a. You know, and this is often when they come down to the finals. You know that uh, the nerves take over, and it's. As you say, so easy to make a slight mistake, and it's only a slight mistake, a bit of a sideways action, and you can yeah. suddenly drop a second and you're out of the game. So Chris Herdman comes to the line now in car 53 as the second of the runners in the top three runoff for north to 1300cc. Uh, he was first in class here in last year and his time was 1.13.45 so he knows what the car is capable of 1.13.45 it's got a uh, an upgraded uh, TRD close ratio gearbox this time he's been here five times at this event so Chris Herdman heads up the course for his final run this weekend in an attempt to take away Class 1 honours. So a 1.13.45 that he got last year is certainly faster than any times this class has put down this year. Heading up towards the Heller hairpin now goes Chris Herdman, last year's 0-1300cc class winner. Got fairly wide coming out of the hairpin, um, that might have cost him some time I'm sure. So now it's a matter of trying to make up every bit of lost time he can on the downhill run. So here he comes, Chris Herdman towards the finish line, the final corner. And here comes Chris Herdman through the finish line. Chris Herdman. 1532, so, no so he's definitely got second in the bag, but not as fast as his winning time last year of a 1.13.45. Chris Herdman, so far at least second. But it all depends on how the Ibusu powered start of John O'Taylor goes. 
So John O'Taylor on the start line now, car number 54. As we mentioned, it runs the Ibiza motorcycle engine with a six-speed sequential gearbox. Yeah, it's got to be the favourite, doesn't he? Well, he was second here last year, so um, I'm sure he wants to take out the title, and he's got to be the favourite, as you say, Lindsay. He's already done a 114 this year. So John O'Taylor driving for victory as he heads up the course towards the Haller hairpin. So here comes John O'Taylor towards the hairpin. Good entry and oh, we bit like uh, Chris Herdman it went a wee bit wide there. Wide That's there, where they're losing the, just washing out a wee bit wide and yeah. losing a little bit of time. They're losing John momentum, O'Taylor. aren't they? Yep. Yeah. So, 45 even neat. To top, top, yep. yep. To the top. And here he comes at the Kimbo Tires finish line. 1377. Oh, 1377. So. He smacked them, as you'd say. He smacked them. <laughs> so there's the winner, John O'Taylor, for the. We kind of sensed that, didn't we? CC. We kind of yep. sensed that. And uh, at a 113 is the best time that he's pulled out of that car this weekend. The 114, as we mentioned, the only one to get into 114s, but he's lowered that mark to a 113.77. Uh, which is interesting because it is not as fast as Chris Herdman did when he won the class last year in a 113.45. So three tenths slower for those who want to count it, but not very much. And another great effort for a 1300cc powered car to do a 113 around the Winmax brake pads. Ashley Forest Rally Sprint course. So that's the 1300cc class done and dusted, as they say. So now we move on to the top 16 runners. And the first one to come to the start line for the top 16 will be, in fact, our fastest two wheel drive man. And that is Chris Hay, car number 32 in the Toyota MR2. Nothing standard about this Toyota MR2, that's for sure. Number 32, Chris Hay, will be the first one to attempt to get a position into the top eight. Of course, 32, half to eight for the next run after this. Darren B8, car number 
All right, so we're waiting for the top 16 runners to start, with the first one being Chris Hay, car number 32 for Mosgiel in the Toyota MR2. And we will have the privilege later in our live coverage this afternoon, we'll get to talk to Sloane Cox. Uh, such a shame, of course, as you realise that Sloane Cox, the current record holder, is out of the competition already. And uh, we will also be talking to Alistair McRae as well. So great to have our personalities coming along and sharing some of their thoughts on this event with us as we wait for Michael Tom, in fact, is going to be the first one in the top 16. So I suspect, in fact, Lindsay, that because Chris Hayde made the bottom of the top 16, he's doing the class runoff. So I suspect... He, he, no? I don't think so. I don't know why he's not here. So Michael Tom and the car that he's sharing with Sheldon Bell. And Michael Tom recorded a 105.75 in the top 32 to make it here to the top 16. So can Michael Tom go quicker again than a 105.75. Just while we wait for Michael Tom to head up to the Heller Hairpin, a special mention to you about Carter Tyres, one of our live streaming sponsors. They have two stores, one in High Street and one in Flaxton Road here in Rangiora. In High Street they'll look after all your car needs, new tyres, balancing alignments, also warranty fitness and servicing. And if you have a truck or commercial vehicle, head down to the Carter Tyres Flaxton Road branch and they will be able to sort you out. So Carter Tyres in High Street and Flaxton Road here in Rangiora. So Michael... Michael Tom's just about to go over the line. He's uh, he's through safely enough. One oh four eight four for Michael Tom. So he's gone almost a second faster than his top thirty two time. So Scott Jones is our next competitor to the line, car number 25. Scott Jones comes from Pleasant Point. And off goes Scott Jones who did a 103.41 to get himself into the top 32. A top 16 or rather and uh, got to the hairpin in a 38.82 so let's see what he can manage this time so if we look at uh, the fastest top eight times so far it was a 102 that you need to lay down to get into the top eight so Scott Jones heading down towards the finish line now and his bid to make the top eight Very 
10491 that should have, probably won't be good enough to make the top eight for Scott Jones. And in fact, is a slower time than he did in the top 32 uh, when he did a 103.41, so 104.91 that time for Scott Jones. So here's Chris Hay, the fastest of the two wheel drive competitors on the course by some margin. The current record holder of, of this class as well. So if a cutoff time is around a 102, which that's the two-wheel drive record. Which is Chris, Chris's set. record, yeah. Yep. So he'll be trying to make it to, no doubt, what well, would probably be the bottom end of that top eight. Yes, if he, he, can he make will it. be, yeah, if he does, indeed. Amazing performance, so if he does, I mean, this is pretty, pretty heavy company now. When you see that the next fastest uh, two-wheel drive car did a 107. Would that be Derek Ayson, wouldn't it? Derek Ayson. Yeah, 107. So, just shows you how much quicker yeah. Chris Hay is in this beautiful little mid-engine Toyota MR2. Thirty-eight forty-seven. That's faster than he did last time. This could be a good time, Chris Hay. 10249. Yeah, good result, Curly. Very, Very good, good, good result. result. 10215 is the record, so he's just outside his own record. It's on his own two wheel, two wheel wreck, two wheel drive record. Which, given his momentum, he might just about uh, eclipse that. I would suggest. Well, he gets, also gets another shot, even if he doesn't make it to the top eight, he gets to have the runoff in his class, which will be coming up a little later. It's Corey McCaskill, the, the man who had the unfortunate accident last night, but uh, has put that in the past, and uh, he's now down to the top 16. Corey McCaskill from uh, Cromwell in Central Otago. He managed a 105.64 to get himself into the top 16 and got to the split at 40.55. So he's going to need to go under that 40 for sure okay, if he well, wants to progress to the towards the top eight. Not a bad exit from the hairpin. 41.40, so slower to the hairpin, so I think this is probably goodbye from the competition for Corey McCaskill and the Subaru Impressa. Just waiting for his time. One oh six four five. so... He's gone slower, and that's Corey out of the competition for the rest of the day. So the next one we have up is uh, Jeff Judd. Jeff Judd and the um, and the Impreza. Now the time that Jeff set last time was the eighth fastest time. So you could say that uh, he's sort of on the bubble. He's on the cusp of uh, of elimination. So this is all about these times around there and. Uh, most people around here will be hoping that Jeff Judd will, will, will make it further. And of course, as we talk about Jeff Judd as the owner of the Magnum Group, which is one of our live streaming sponsors and also a sponsor of numerous cars here competing at the Ashby Forest Rally Sprint and in rallying full stop. Don't forget the Magnum Group have locations in Christchurch and Dunedin and they really are specialists in automotive compliance import compliance, lapse registrations, accident write-off inspections, but they can also look after your general car needs as well with servicing and general repairs and warrant of fitness inspections. 
in the Dunedin branch, they have that uh, Grime Busters grooming service. The best groomers, 38.88. Oh, that's a little bit slower at the hairpin for Jeff Judd. So, from Magnum Compliance, Jeff Judd. One oh two point eight four. One oh two point eight four. Which is right on the cusp, is it not? It is indeed, and slightly oh. slower than what he did last time. So um, it's Chris around. Hay, it's around this figure, isn't it? That's an interesting perspective. It's around this time, it, Lindsay, to think that Jeff Judd did a one oh two eight four, and Chris Hay in the two wheel drive did a one oh two four nine. To be fair, though, whilst the car is. Um, uh, Chris Hay, it's 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 mid mounted. It's got all all the weight. The weights are all perfect in the car. Um, yeah, and it'd be a lot lighter. And it's a lot lighter and nimbler than your average it's, rally it's, car. It's it's pretty powerful. Um, yeah, I say you can equate to to Jeff Judd. <laughs> so, to the start line now is Jason Clark from Havelock. Jason did a 102.59, but he's going to have to get into the uh, 101s to make sure he gets into the top eight. So Jason Clark from Havelock on the beautiful Marlborough Sounds, doing his doing his bit here at uh, Ashley Forest. And Jason, of course, was doing double duties this weekend, also driving a two-wheel drive Corolla as well. And uh, here he is in the Mitsubishi Lancer, the car fast enough to make it into the top 16. Down through the dipper, round Jennings Corner, and heading down towards the finish line. Comes it, Jason through, Clark. Through Jennings, you got it, Grant. One oh two nine nine. One oh two is very popular, isn't it? It is. <laughs> yeah, half a second One oh two nine nine for Jason Clark and it's slower than what he did to get into the top 32 so I can see that uh, Lindsay that it's going to come down to those fractions of a second in the twos yep. as to whether you're going to make it, it, is. It's, 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 make it through it's, it's down to that Richard Bateman comes to the line now and Richard did a 101.52 for the fifth fastest time in the top 32 elimination he needs to do at least that time to make sure he gets into the top eight Richard Bateman another one from the uh, sunny Marlborough Richard Bateman well known to all people involved in rallying in the South Island pretty accomplished compared to his Richard so Richard Bateman, the Mitsubishi Evo 9, first time here at Ashley Forest. And it's a great time in this car, that is. Thirty-seven ninety-five to the hairpin. He has done a one minute one zero before, but not with this car. So what can the Evo do? One oh oh nine four. So that is. I would say he's assured it, it, him a position I'd in the say, top eight. I'd say he's in the top eight. Yep, absolutely. Next. And now we've got Matt Summerfield. Three times winner here, runner up New Zealand Rally Championship last year. Well known in these parts and uh, running the uh, the family Savari this time. 
as, a, as opposed to the uh, Mitsubishi Mirage he's campaigned this year and where he won this event last year. So Matt's already done a 101-1-2. Let us see what Matt Somerville can pull out in the top 16 run in the Subaru Impressa. Of course, as Steve Murphy, Murphy mentioned in our uh, interview just before we came back on air for the top 16, he drove uh, Steve's Cordia, the Starian Cordia, and, uh, but it was a wet edition of the Ashley Forest Rally Sprint that year and could only do a 101, was the best that the Cordia could do on that particular year. But here he goes around, uh, very nicely around the hairpin for Matt Summerfield. He's got that heel pin absolutely nailed. So he's a little bit down on Richard Bateman at the hairpin. So he's trying to get down into the magic minute mark. And here he comes, Matt Summerfield. And we'll just have a look at the time. 10095. Oh, 10095. Oh, 10094. Is, is there a thousandth there, is there? <laughs> Goodness me. What a battle between Richard Bateman and Matt Summerfield. And what a battle between the Mitsubishi Evo versus the Subaru Impressa. Oh, absolutely. Nothing in it. As Sheldon Bell lines up for his run. Yeah, Sheldon Bell's done a great job um, at this event. He's quite a newcomer here to the event. He was first time last year and he finished 15th overall. So, yep, he's, uh, he'd be hoping to break into the top eight this year. And I think the only rallies he regularly does is Canterbury, of course, his home rally, and he goes to the West Coast. That's about it, I and think. That's about it. Yeah. So a couple of rallies yeah. and rally sprints. He does uh, the local rally sprints in this car which he always shares with Michael Tom so very uh, yeah very local just club stuff primarily apart from the two mainland rally rounds that he does he was very fast in the downhill run yesterday in fact uh, lost it yeah. coming down past the finish line and took out the hay bales yesterday so how will the aging Mitsubishi 101 8 it's a it's a good time so will that be fast enough for him to make the top eight if he does that would be a remarkable effort for Sheldon as to the line now comes Sean Sean Haggerty another local Haggerty. driver here from from Rangi Europe on the Subaru Impreza. Shaw did a 102.34 last time. So he's going to have to up the game a bit here if he wants to go further. So Sean has to get down into really the minutes the minute mark he does to make sure he's safe to carry on and it could be just one ask too many Grant so he did make the top eight last year but with some of the heavy artillery this year at the top of the field that makes it a bit more difficult the times are certainly uh, hotter than what they were last year much the same field too, but by gosh, these times are hot there. 38-3-3, he's faster to the split than he did last time. See the old bar's been raised, hasn't it? So, Scotsman Sean Hegarty. Got a couple of Scotsmen here. So is Alistair McRae. <laughs> Indeed, at the pointy end. Oh! oh. Trying hard, he pulls it under control. And... Let's see what his time comes out. 
Well done, Sean Hegarty. Giving it everything. 101.57 may not be fast enough for the top eight. So Garrett Thomas is the next one to line up. Yeah, the revelation of, of, um, of rallying in this part of the world at the moment is Garrett Thomas and his lovely, uh, one of the more younger Subaru WRXs. Beautifully built and prepared car by yeah. Wood End Automotive and Dave Ollis and his team. This car really goes well. <laughs> And then goes Garrett Thomas, Thomas, a man on a mission. Got to the split last time in a 38.98. But that only transpired into a 102. So it's got to go quicker than that. As he heads up towards the hella hairpin. No mistakes and a clean exit could be. It's nice and tight around the hairpin and a good launch out of the hairpin for very tidy. Garrett Thomas, very tidy indeed, Lindsay. Well, yep, he's done it to the hairpin. Can he do it downhill to make sure he makes the top eight? Jennings and now through the dipper. Oh, another one, oh, 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 six, four. Crikey's. Who would have thought the top eights come down to the minute mark <laughs> oh, no, for this no. year? Goodness gracious. We've got uh, Richard Bateman on a one minute, point nine four. Matt Summerfield, point nine five. And Garrett Thomas, the fastest of the three of them, oh, the three of them. on six, four. So up to the line now comes the V8 powered of Mitsubishi Graham, Staria. Of Graham Bearing. All the way from uh, Waihe. Come a long way, Graham has, but uh, this, that car and, the, and this event go hand in hand, really. Indeed, this is the car that held the record for 17 long years. Not in the hands of Graham Bajering, but of course in the hands of Kim Austin. And a similar style of car with the V8 powered Starion, like the Cordia that uh, Steve Murphy built. Very similar type of car. Although uh, Steve Murphy is probably a little bit more adventurous <laughs> in his, his design. Yes. yes. <laughs> Up to the heli hip and he comes. Did a 39.34. 3888, so, so he's quicker. faster to, the, to this hairpin. Lots of dust from the big V8 Starion. And let's see what he stops the clock at. One o, we didn't quite get it. it was an eight, but I don't think it's going to be fast no. enough to. Uh, I think Graham Bajering is gone. Yeah. While they were talking, out. we didn't quite get it. He did a one o three six six last time, so yeah. um, I don't think it's going to be. Uh, it was certainly not fast enough at the top. So um, no, I think that's um, Graham Bajering out of the running. And here's, here's Trevor Crow. Our, our good friend Trevor Crow. I'm going to say this man's age 73, so you know that's there's hope for us old fellas yet with people like him around. <laughs> Trevor Crow, an absolute legend at this rally sprint course. 
And flies uh, the little Samaru Impressa up towards the hairpin now. Thirty nine four zero last time to the hairpin. Thirty nine five six. So yeah, nearly two tenths slower to the hairpin. But can he make it up on the downhill run? But not fast enough, I don't think, to make it into the top eight. One oh three one three for Trevor Crow. So that's his fastest time of the day. So he's kept the best till last, but it won't be fast enough to head into the top eight. As Neil Webb in the Mitsubishi Mirage with Evo powered gear comes up to the start line. One of these indecently quick Mitsubishi Mirages. <laughs> I'm not sure what they weigh, Grant. Do you know what they weigh? No. No, they're, they're very lightweight, so we, we've been we've told. So Neil was just over the minute last time, a 1 minute point three six. Can he go under the minute mark on this run? Got to the hairpin in 37.30, which was a very respectable. In fact, the, first, the third fastest time recorded to the split. So, um, if he can continue that time, he's looking pretty good for the top eight as he heads towards the hairpin. I don't think he can get much. So Neil Webb on a mission to make the top eight cut here at the Winmax Brake Pads Ashley Forest Rally Sprint. He's flying that little mirage down the hill. Oh, he's rocketing. Well, <laughs> he's smashed the minute mark. 57.87. 87. That's a very, very good effort from Neil Webb. Well, 35.86. So he picked some good time on the way up as well as on the time on the way down. He was third in 2016. He could well be on the money to be third here once again yeah, this year. He's taken that car to two New Zealand hill climb titles as well. So, yep. Yeah. Now we got our international visitor and Alistair McRae and the ex-possum born Subaru with the biggest turbo on it you can ever imagine. And He's done a 56.91 yeah. in the previous round. Winner of the uh, current MP, sorry, the uh, Monica Hill Climb, Waste of the Sky. Oh, we're hearing 750 horsepower for the Subaru Impressa WRC. So, uh, certainly running uh, much more power than what it did as a, a world rally car. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> There's no restrictors on this one. And so... What did you do to the split? 35.01. So, through Jennings, going through the, through the dipper. And here he comes to the finish line. 56.17. So he's just slowly chipping, chipping, chipping away. 56-1-7. We'd be in raptures and everyone would be clapping and so excited years ago. No one even, not even a ripple out here in front of people. And here is the man, Hayden Patton.
Now he's talking a potential, he thinks, in this car of 52, which is absolutely astonishing time for this course. I'm surprised he told us that, actually, Grant. <laughs> I'd keep that thing quiet. Perhaps he just told us as, in the interview to wind up the competitors. As I said to you yesterday, I really think he, he wants to set a time that's going to last. Uh, I, if he's carrying on rallying and he implied this, he, you know, he mightn't be back. We, we just don't know. You know. That's right. So 55 even. <laughs> Hayden has laid down so far. And he, all going well, has two more shots after this. All smoke coming out from the front. Did we see smoke coming out of the front? He was concerned about heating up, wasn't he? He was. 34-3-1. It's much lower than the 32-8-9 he did in the split last time. There definitely is some smoke coming out of the car. Yes, he slowed up. Big time. So, yep. Let's just see what his time is. Oh dear. 105. Well, that has put the cat among the pigeons for sure because that's two of the favoured top three Gone. cars already eliminated. So it's Alistair McRae's now to lose, is it not? It is indeed. What do we say so often this weekend? It doesn't take much, does it? It does indeed. It does indeed. And uh, as Hayden said, he was concerned about the heat being generated he was. under the car, was causing gearbox issues. And I think that's what might have been the problem. And uh, we saw that bit of smoke come out of the, uh, the right front wheel arch of the car as he was heading up towards the hairpin. So I think heat equals smoke. Heat there equals isn't smoke. A problem not with a good, that car. No. Such a shame. Well, well, well. So now we move into the next of the class runoffs, which is the 1301 to 1600cc class. And we'll just see who is lining up as the top three to race off for honours in that class. And it is Richard Bateman, of course, who's already been in the top 16 runoff. J John T. Brentzel and Jason Clark. So both Richard and Jason are dual entries in two different cars at this event and yeah, they've so made it into another class runoff, the runoff for class two. So I guess one will go the first and the other one will be the last one. So, um, but oh. Is there a stunned silence around the place, Grant? I think you could have say a bit of fizz has gone out of the yeah, air. Yeah, I think the expectation of that grand final that everyone had envisaged in their mind of a, to be fair to everybody else in the field, you know, Sloan Cox and everything. I think everyone came here thinking Alistair McRae and, and Hayden Patton, didn't they? They did, I think. We, we, yes. we, we never said it, but, no. but yeah, yeah. you know, and I was so hoping that Sloan Cox was going to be going to, going to put it to them the whole weekend and. Yeah, well, there you go. That's what happens, isn't it? Yeah. And, and uh, unfortunately for Sloan, uh, in the attempts, he's been down here with that uh, lightweight Lancer uh, Evo 8. Um, he's had the odd mechanicals here, a uh, little bit of reliability, yeah. and uh, yeah. this time it was a little I, bit of a I, driver error. I guess uh, you get that. Well. With, it was dro well, yes, it was, unless something else happened to the car. True. True. Uh, it could have been a, a suspension steering uh, issue or something. We don't, we, we don't know. And we'll find out soon, I hope, when he comes and talks to us. So, um, we're still, like, Sloan's, um, Sloan's uh, record uh, is still, um, still standing. 
And uh, one thinks it might still be around at the end of the day. Indeed, unless um, Alistair McRae can pull out a good second and a, a good half. good second and a half, yeah. Then that record will stay. And um, I'm sure those boys, um, and I think some of the ex possum born mechanical people are still associated with that car. I think they know, as we said, he's been chipping away, chipping away. You only have to do enough to get into the next round of elimination and try and preserve as much as you can before you wind every possible piece of horsepower out for the final run. Yeah, it is risky stuff doing that. I mean, it's. Uh, it, 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 but you've got to do it. And just while we wait for the first of our 1301 to 1600 cc finalists to come up to the start line, right, here we, are. we uh, have the great privilege of having Alistair McRae come to our broadcasting position to have a chat. Alistair, welcome to New Zealand and uh, what a magnificent car this is to be driving at an event like this. Uh, yeah, for sure. I've been lucky enough to drive it quite a few times now down in New Zealand, so I seem to be trusted with it. I'll need to return that trust, but it's great to drive it. Uh, great event, and uh, we're obviously going well at the moment, so yeah. hopefully that continues. We've noticed you've, just, you've been chipping away, chipping away, and uh, you know that's the name of this game, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, obviously my first time here, so you've got to learn the road. and I can memorise, I know the road off by heart, but it's just getting that last... Tenth and half ten or half a second out that we just keep trying to go a bit quicker each time. So approaching the hairpin at the top, have you taken different angles and you found your maximum through there yet? Uh, no, the, the thing with that car is because it's obviously older car with older electronics with a big turbo. The turbo lags. No, it's not bad in it, but you do get a bit. So you've got to try and you need to slide the car in to get it out sharp. So it's uh, it would be better to drive round and not go sideways, but we, we can't do it with that car. So we've just got to. I've found the way it's working. I think we'll just keep it that way. <laughs> coming, coming downhill, and uh, I'm not sure if you've seen the coastline in the distance there, which is yeah. quite beautiful to watch. I've not seen it. Now. Yeah, good. I'm <laughs> just wondering. Whether you've seen it yet? <laughs> no, I mean that when when you come round the hairpin to the top, then it's well you're in sixth gear. When you go back into the trees, down down one through the left, then back into six, and it's it's I haven't been absolutely flat out all the way down. I've had to balance it and the brake a little bit, but the throttle's all the way down the whole yeah. way. So unfortunately, no time to look at the scenery. Oh well, <laughs> but maybe next time. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, we don't get a chance to look at it this weekend. <laughs> the last time you drove this car was in tarmac spec. And you took it up to uh, Rod Millen's Leadfoot Festival. Yeah, yeah now we've been there with the car the last three years. So with that car we did Race to the Sky in 2015. And then we've done three three times at Leadfoot. And then obviously this is the first time back on gravel again. So great, great to be here. And it's not all very different events. Those three years like so different. Yeah, for sure, obviously. Race to the Sky, I was... I was lucky to do it once, but I would have loved it if it continued because it was a tremendous event. You know, yeah. to be for us in the car on your own is unusual. It goes and, you know, on and on and on, doesn't it? Yeah, and it's 16 k's or whatever it is, and it's, it's very, very fast and flowing. So that, for me, that was that's when I kind of fell in love with the car and, and that event. Uh, but then, uh, Leadfoot shot sharp the same as this, but on asphalt. So Almost it's you right up, up, up our Rod's driveway, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. We've got. I don't, I'm not sure if we've got an outright record yet, but we've, we've won it the last two years. So uh, it's been it's been a great event down there. And then come here, you're back in gravel. But it's it's very very fast, you know. You're 50 whatever seconds, and it's over and done with. So uh, you've got to be on on the money straight away. So it's all. You've had a wonderful uh, World Rally Championship career as well. Um, so what's life for Alistair McRae like now? You live in Western Australia? Yeah, I've, I've realised that I might need to get a proper job now. It's been, it's been my biggest fear all my driving career. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm busy now. I've obviously got a family in Australia. We own, we own a gym. I still do a bit of coaching for you know younger drivers and older guys. Uh, that keeps me busy. And then doing events like this, whether it's here or back in the UK for Goodwood, it's, uh, I've still got a pretty good lifestyle. It's good. And if there's your dad, what's he doing? He's still rallying. He's as he's still turned, turned 75 next month yeah. and still doing historic stuff and still going well, still so winning classes there. in the historics and stuff. Yeah. It, it gives me hope that I've got a long time yeah. to keep enjoying my life. <laughs> Excellent. 
Alice, it's been an absolute privilege to have you here. Thanks for coming to the commentary team and uh, sharing some thoughts with us. And good luck for the, the final two runs, uh, three runs here we have no, today. Th thanks very much. Really enjoyed it. And if we can get two or three clean runs now, we'll be happy. Thanks, Mike. Good luck. Thank, Thank you, Alistair. Cheers. Pleasure. So there we are, we're now into the first runner has gone through as you would have seen on screen in the 13.01 to 1600cc class and uh, put down a time of 1.12.83 So the second of our top three in the 13.01 to 1600cc class, heading up the hill now. And uh, we'll just see... So Jason Clark has done a 112.83. Bateman. So Johnny Brentsall, what can he do? So John D. Brensel, who has been the class pace setter, how's he going to do this time? One twelve oh four for John D. for John D. Brensel from Blenheim. So. Very, very close again in the class here. One twelve eight three. Jaunty's so far has the fastest time at one twelve oh four. So it's all up to Richard Bateman now to see if he can beat a one twelve oh four to win class two here at the Winmac Breaks Ashley Forest Rally Sprint. We just wait for Richard Bateman to come to the line. That we're taking on this, run. this is the top eight will be Chris Hayes, the by Booza Starlin, a new car that he hasn't driven before until he brought it to Ashby Forest, and he may well walk away with the top honours in his class first time with this car. So another of the Hibuzu powered Toyota Starlets. So let's see how Richard Bateman gets on for Class 2 Honours. Bog the wee bit off the line, but that thing is humming up the hill now. He has done a 111 so far, which is quicker than either of the Jason Clark or Jonty Brentsell have done in the runoff for class honours. So let's see what Richard Bateman can pull out of the bag for his final run here in the class today. So. Richard Bateman has in fact also made it a wee bit slower than Jonty to the hairpin but uh, he will also be appearing in the top eight because he's made it to the top eight with the seventh fastest time as he flies down the hill in the Ibuza Starlet. It'd be a pretty good time this one. He's, yeah, 112. One, one so he pulled a 111, but he can't do it in the can't, final. No. John D. Brensel from Blenheim on a 112.04 is the winner of Class 2. Now I'm sure the Owen boys will be able to <laughs> pop a cap in celebration they, for that one. Yeah, that was, that was great for the Owen boys. Because <laughs> they'll be trying to claim that they taught him everything, but which one they won't, they will never ever decide. <laughs> and of course, John D. does. 
do the co-driving duties for the uh, the Owen brothers in their Mitsubishi Lancer in rally uh, regular rallies. And that would deserve a medal anyway. It absolutely would. Right. So there we are. So that's the next class runoff, the 1301 to 1600cc class, as we now wait for the next uh, part of the program, which is going to be the top eight elimination round. So once again, we are very privileged to have join us in the commentary position, uh, so, uh, Sloan Clocks. And Sloan, currently you've got the record here on the hill. Yep. You must be thinking, what are these boys doing? It's yeah. getting close. It was like that's been uh, close all day. Even Hayden got real close yesterday, and that was quite early to get close to the record. But today seems it's been a little bit slower. We finally got our pace out today after proms yesterday, and the card feeling wicked. It's a lot better than last year, actually. A few changes were done, but unfortunately, problems early. That run where I spun on, we actually lost the centre diff pump on the start line, so effectively, I was in two a drive from the start. We looked at the data, it happened even before I left the start line, so my front wheels were going nuts, my backs were hardly moving. So in the corner I spun, I was just too rutty and didn't have the normal drive. And that is motorsport. We are bummed that it's shoot out rounds and we're out now. But we were, set, we were second guessing a bit here, but we didn't think it was a driver error. It didn't look yeah. it just snapped on you, didn't it? Yeah. 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 Um, if I didn't know how it was handling, I probably would have driven differently and drove through it. Yeah. At the time I was still giving it 100%, didn't realise it was in two-wheel drive. And as I hit those ruts, I just couldn't drive through the corner. And did you feel this morning that the car was uh, going to give you a 54.9 da da da? I felt it was at the record pace. It was. Um, we've done a few upgrades, it's feeling better. For that first run today, it was only 57, but I knew there was a lot more in the car. Yeah. Each run was giving a little bit more, still not getting that tidy run. I know from when I set the record, it's about that perfect run, and I hadn't done close to that yet today, so I knew, I knew it could come today, and I knew Hayden is definitely capable, and us yeah. is showing as he's learned the road, he is getting quicker. Yeah. Well, slow with the competition at the top of the field, the top three with yourself and Alistair and, and Hayden. I mean, it's brought spectator numbers out here that we haven't seen for years, so congratulations yeah. on helping us get uh, the numbers and the people out to yeah. watch this magnificent event. And see yeah. you back next year. Exactly, we'll be you definitely back. Nah, Absolutely. From, definitely back. From when we first heard about this event, we always wanted to do it. It wasn't until we brought the hill climb beast, we thought we had to come down now. And on the second year breaking the record, it's, a, it's an unreal feeling, and we'll keep coming back and keep fighting to hold that record and make it even faster. But Sloan, outside of the, the rally sprint here, okay, you now have a new life in the, uh, the the rally cross yeah. scene. Uh, so tell me, what made you decide to head off to the world rally cross scene, and how's it going for you? Ever since I started motorsport, my aim was to always get to Europe. We are a motorsport freak, you want to get to Europe, it's where the fast drivers are. We always loved rallying and pushed hard there. But we thought, for me, it wasn't quite right. I've always been a showman. And also, rallycross was a big sport in the world getting bigger. And we, we thought, let's get our hands in this. So we found the opportunity in the off-season last year and thought this is the year to break to Europe and see what we can make from it. So I do love rallying, but now I'm basing myself as a rallycross driver and going to try and be a world rallycross champion. Sloan, do you think that we're going to get a, what's going to happen here in New Zealand? Well, I've heard talks of the world rallycross coming here. Yeah. So they are people like people high up are looking into it, yeah. but there's a lot more bases going to be built first. We need a few novice tracks to really get it built up first. Years ago, and before you probably were around, Mystery Creek was well known for, for rally cross. Yes, I've heard all about yeah, that. And that would before be a my good time. place to go back to Mystery Creek, not to me, a logical place oh, to that, go back to. That's a massive location, you can easily put a good track in. Yeah. And we look overseas, some tracks are built on circuits, but not all of them are. They make custom tracks, and there is a chance to be somewhere awesome, even in. New Zealand, a lot of land here to build that track. I think Trevor Crow, who's here this weekend, he's won the uh, run across at Mystery uh, uh, Creek. Yeah, yeah, but some people have done that. I've heard a lot of even locals, photo yeah. of people have said they used to do that rally across there and they'd love to see it come back. Yeah. As an ex uh, Hamiltonian, uh, of course, that event at Mystery Creek had a natural amphitheatre to it. Yeah. It was an ideal place to hold an event like that. But talking about rally cross, I mean, tell us uh, and tell our viewers, you're in the RX Academy. Yes. Tell us what the RX Academy is and what the cars are you drive. So the RX Academy was set up two years ago as a, a base championship okay, for young like drivers to come up through. Up. As Raycross has been getting bigger in the world, there wasn't really a, a base for drivers to come up through. So the RX Academy was set up for young drivers in identical Renault Clio RS RX purpose-built rallycross cars. 
So everyone's the same and it comes down to your driver ability. But it's not just about driving the whole time you're there. You have mentors, you have driver coaches, you have world champions there helping you learn the fast you can, learn your fitness, learn your mental side, especially everything there is to motorsport. And it pays off in all sorts of driving, not just rallycross. I've had the recent experience to be in Europe with a young driver on the circuit side of it. When you get to Europe, I don't think you ever could comprehend the type of competition and the level of motorsport until you get there. You're exactly right there. I had a big expectation when I got there. It just blew my mind, just the, the fans, everything about it, how young people are starting and how quick they become because it's bred into them from a young age. So you're going back, all, all the plans that are going back? Yes, I've uh, got one more round this year. Yeah. So beginning of October, so it's six, about six, seven, 7th of October is my last round in Sweden. And then we're working now towards how to bring a package to next year. Yeah. It's not as straightforward as doing it. I've got a lot of work for budget-wise, sponsorship work. But now we're overseas, we want to stay there and build on it. It was never a one-year plan for us. Always How many rounds are there for championship? The Arts Academy, there's been five, or f- there is five rounds. Five rounds. And what we're looking at next year, you're looking more about eight rounds and the next championship yeah. up for next year. Yeah. So how, does the, how do the levels go up in the World Rally Cross? Yep, they, they have a lot of their like, um, national areas. With our good championships, but you really want the worldwide ones that get more rounds, more publicity. So they have the Arx Academy that's now the base. And then you have the S2000s that are still front-wheel drive. So if your front-wheel drive is your style, what you like. But they also have the RX2 series that's space-framed, mid-mounted, non-turbo, 2.5, wicked four-drive cars. And that's where I want, so that's the aim for me next year. Good luck for the final round, Sloan. Thank you for bringing the Evo 8 down here. Bad luck that it wasn't to be this year, but Lex, uh, yep. you've got your fingers crossed that's that that record stays intact. I hope that record stays in back next year. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Sloan. Thank you. Thank you. All righty. Okay, we're just uh, waiting to get into the top eight runoff. All right, okay, and um, so the runoff for the top eight is underway. And uh, after the top eight runoff, while we get set for the top two, uh, Hayden's going to come back and uh, yep, talk to us, and uh, we'll find out a little bit more about uh, the disaster that became the Hyundai that has put him out of the competition. So uh, very grateful that Hayden will come back and have a word with us and with our viewers. And we're also extremely grateful that Hayden is not only the overall sponsor of this event with the WinMax brake pads, but also one of our live streaming sponsors. As we head into the top eight now, let's just see how Chris Hay, 39.69 to the split. So we're near on the top eight, aren't we, Grant? <laughs> oh, no. no, this is the. T- oh, sorry, last this is the off. last runoff. This is the two-wheel drive. So the the two-wheel drive runoff. One oh three five three. Yep. Yeah. No, it must be no, this is the, this is the top eight. Uh, top eight. And we have Richard Bateman on the line now from Blenheim. Yep. So Chris Hay will also get another run because he's going to be running off in the top four class, but a 103.53. Yeah. So 103.53, not as fast as the 102s that uh, Chris Hay has managed earlier in the event and also the record that he holds at 102 for the fastest two-wheel drive. Mind you, we should mention that he's also got his class runoff to go, which gives him another chance. So um, yeah. perhaps he's realised that uh, maybe in the top eight he's not going to make the top four, so let's just get the car through without, yeah, as I think we've seen, yeah. you know, with, yeah, putting too much stress and strain on the car. And leave it to the guys that are down into the one minute bracket who are going to be the ones that have to try and make it into the top four because a one minute is probably 
too big a ask for Chris Hay in the two-wheel drive Toyota MR2. As Richard Bateman heads up the course in the Mitsubishi Evo 9. Looking to try and get into that top four. So... Just seeing what Richard split is, 37.95 last time, 38.47, so he's gone slower to the split. So let's see what he can pull on the downhill run to keep himself in contention for a top four. Waiting for Richard Bateman. 101-13 for Richard Bateman. 101-13. Smartly slower than his previous run. So Matt Summerfield, he's got down to the minute mark, which we thought may be almost the limit for this car, but let's see whether he can yeah, well, crack. We've lost two competitors out of this now, so it's a bit of a changed ball game. Now. It is, it absolutely is. Um, so Matt Summerfield, a 100.94 to make it into the top eight. The door shut. And uh, another minute mark. Now that we've got a couple of our leading contenders out, could be enough to get into the top four. So Matt revs up, launches the Subaru. And he's heading up the course. He got to the split last time on a 38.09. His hairpins have been uh, very, very good. Wide line in, nice tight line out, and um, a good exit out of the hairpin, absolutely critical if he wants to head into the top four. So, his split time, 37.54, so faster to the split, he might crack the minute. We know how fast Matt is downhill. Well, he's half a second quicker than last time, so... So, what can Matt Summerfield pull out of the Subaru Impressa this time? Oh, absolutely on the minute. Oh, oh, Couldn't no. quite crack the 59. Oh, the, re <laughs> the reaction around here is unbelievable at the start finish line here. <laughs> so, so close to taking that car to a sub, sub minute uh, yeah. time. And Sheldon Bell lines up. I mean, you've got to give the award to this guy, surely, for being the improver, the yeah. import performer of the weekend. Oh, it does. No great effort. Sheldon Bell to get this far in this car, unbelievable. Basically, she's stock standard Evo 1, no restrictor, of course. And uh, I still have a special award for Gavin Reed and the old BMW, though, too. Oh, fair enough. I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so, he's got Kiwi drainage on the side. Keep it out of the drain, Sheldon. Keep it nice and clean and straight. And um, okay, you could well make it through. So Sheldon Bell's best time is a 101.81. So yep, just his second time ever competing at the Winmax Brakes Ashley Forest Rally Sprint. And uh, doing an absolute cracker job. So he's got a high 101. I think if he could get to the magic minute mark as well, he'd be more than happy. So, heading up towards the hairpin now for Sheldon Bell.
nicely executed. The downhill run now for Sheldon. Big breath and foot to the floor. Let's see how Sheldon Bell goes. He's d through the finish line. Has he cracked the minute or got the minute? One o one three seven for Sheldon Bell. So he's he's gone quicker yet again. A one o one eight seven last time, eight one last time. So uh, another half second improvement from Sheldon Bell. Yeah, got got some got some heavy but heavy metal to come though, haven't we? We have indeed. So um, and we've got Garrett Thomas and Neil Webb and Ballister McRae. Yeah, it's if you're not on the minute or under. Although, actually, lo it's like losing Sloan Cox and, and Hayden Padden. It's sort of, it, it's opened it up a lot, hasn't it now? It has, it has indeed. So, Sean Haggerty from Rangiora in his Subaru Impressa car number 14. He set the fourth fastest time coming here, so there's going to be a real battle to be in that top four, I would suggest, between Sean Haggerty, uh, Matt Summerfield, and Richard Bateman only with a 101, so it's going to be, need to be a minute. Sean Haggerty heading up the hill in the Subaru Impressa. He got to the split last time in 38.33. Let's see what he can get up to the hill of hairpin in this time. So to the hell of the hairpin a little bit wide coming out of the hairpin so suck it in foot to the floor and let's see what he can pull on the downhill part for Sean Haggerty almost to the final corner here he comes across the finish line can he 10193. So he's gone slower, a second slower than uh, he did in the top 16 elimination round. So Garrett Thomas now coming up to have his crack. He's already done a one minute, 0.64, and that's the sort of pace he's going to need to be on to be in the top four. And crikey, if Garrett makes it to the top four again, another uh, yeah. a great achievement. Another great achievement. It's part of his very fast learning curve. So, Garrett Thomas getting ready to take his newer version Subaru Impressa off the start line. Beautifully prepared by Wood End Automotive and Dave Ollis. You see the two Thomases on the side, both with the initial G, Garrett and Gemma, his wife, she normally co-drives. And they are daughter and son-in-law of Dave Ollis from Wood End Automotive. So last time Garrett got to the split in a very respectable 37-2-0, which was the third so fastest time to the split in the top 16. So let's see what he can do to the split as he heads to the Haller hairpin now. 
Nice and tight through the hairpin there. Keep it well on the apex. 37.08, so he's improved again. He may crack the minute mark on this run down. Whoa, that's very wide coming out of there as he comes down towards the finish line. That was out of Adam Jennings. <laughs> One oh oh nine one. So he'll be through. I, yep, he looks safe enough. Yes. So we're expecting the next two guys will go faster. Faster. They've already done uh, in the fifties. So providing they have clean runs, well, Alex that's, 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 that's the and thing. Neil Webb that's, should that's be right. assured. But then the next two would be Matt Summerfield yep. on one minute even yeah and then Garrett Thomas on one minute point nine nine one yeah so the, the 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 playoff for third and fourth in fact could be between the older and the newer Sabaris true as Neil Webb from Blenheim comes up to the start line as we've talked all weekend about this light nimble Evo powered Mitsubishi Mirage. And you don't secure two New Zealand Hill Climb Championships uh, without knowing how to play this game. So, Neil Webb. Yeah, it's just a coming down bit. <laughs> However, he is very. Uh, very averse at coming down as well, but I mean, he's yeah, he, uh, this is all part of his bread and butter, really. And that car is just a perfect little car for this sort of event, too. Oh, did he did he hit a bump in that hairpin then, Grant? Or was it, it just look like it? Yeah, because it will be starting to cut up a bit now at the top there. 35 51, so he's Whoa. three seconds, uh, three tenths faster. So, could be. This should be a good one. Fifty-seven six four again. Another one chipping away, chipping away, and going a little bit faster for Neil Webb. So he's guaranteed it. So he's guaranteed. So, Alistair McRae just has to have another good clean run. He's been doing 56s, and that will be enough to see him through to the top four. So, Alistair McRae from Western Australia these days. A far cry from the lowlands of Scotland, isn't it? <laughs> well, having been to uh, the beautiful Perth environment and the lovely beaches and the sunshine there, it's... Um, Probably not too much of a toss up as to where you'd want to put your roots down. Well, I'm not sure. I think, from what I hear, a lot of the British go home because the climate's so um, oppressive. Oh. It's true, yeah, they do. They can't handle it. But he obviously is handling it okay. <laughs> McRae heading off as the final runner in the top eight. Just four competitors will continue on. Yep. 35 0 1 to the split for Alistair last time. So let's see what Alistair records. Thirty-four nine one. Yes, that's the quickest of the split for Alistair McRae. Spectacular, Alistair McRae. Oh, 
What a shame we haven't got the other Printables here. <laughs> 55 7 1. Well, there we are. So, who are our top four? Alistair McRae, of course, Neil Webb, and it will be Matt Summerfield, Matt Summerfield and, and Garrett Thomas. Thomas. So, there we are. A Western Australian local, uh, someone from Blenheim, <laughs> and then we have uh, Darfield and Rangura close to home to yeah, well. chase out the minor money perhaps here in the top four runoff which will come next uh, but we will have a class runoff we still have to have the class so like four runoff uh, well, that time of Alistair McRae is compared to his uh, he's chipped away all, all all weekend hasn't he he has that's what we said you know and, and just chipping yeah, away chipping away this is this is more than chipping away now this is yeah. substantial gains now 55 he's been 57s and 58s I think Dude, we're just looking for the uh, sheet. But yes, you are. You are right, Lindsay, because he started out at uh, at uh, 58s, 58s, 57s. He got to 56s, and now it's 55. Yeah, there's so some pretty significant gains in there. Indeed. But how much more now? Is this is right on the on the button now? Yeah. And as Alistair said uh, when he joined us here for an interview, that of course the car is uh, does have older electronics, which does give you some limitations. It does. And as he said, getting to the hairpin, you've got to slide it in as opposed to, to get drive it out. As opposed to drive it through. Yes, indeed. So, so we now have the, the, the classic two-wheel drives coming up to the line. Yep, two-wheel we drive do, classics. Which is class four. Chris A, Paul Mullen and Jim Tennant. Is that, that, oh, hang on. No, here we are. No, we're in, sorry, Historics is in class three, I think, isn't it? Yes, so Bert Murray, yes. Derek Ason and Phil Walker, class yep, three runoff, I beg your pardon. That's right, Chris Hayes in the in the two wheel drive one. Yep, which will be coming the in between yeah. the top four and the top two. Got it. Hotel, sorry, Hotel, 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 Hotel. Just as we wait for the first of our class three historic competitors to come to the line, just a special call out to import parts specialists. Uh, who are supporting our live streaming coverage here this weekend. Of course, it was started in 1988 by Paul and Ian Carter, still owned by Paul to this day, situated at 358 St. Asif Street in Christchurch. They sell new automotive parts to the trade and the public, brakes, clutch, suspension. If you're looking for those small, hard-to-find parts for European and Japanese vehicles, give Paul a call at Import Parts Specialist. They will be able to sort it for you. They supply parts to many of the franchise dealers, wholesale trade and special indent orders. Of course, uh, Paul and Ian both ran in the South Island Endurance Series for 10 years with much success. But these days you'll find Paul behind the counter at Import Parts Specialist, 358 St. Asif Street in Christchurch. And if you're looking for that small, uh, hard to find part, for a European or Japanese vehicle, then pop in and see Paul. They also supply uh, parts to the franchise dealers, wholesale trade, and do special indent orders as well. Paul Carter at Import Parts Specialist, 358 St. Asif Street in Christchurch. So the final of the classic two-wheel drive cars come to the line and it'll be two RX-7s against the Escort. Uh -huh. So all previous times discounted. It's now down to who can put in the fastest time of the three to determine first, second and third in class three. First one off the start line is Phil Walker. 
No, we've lost our... Um, this car's been a rally car since 1996. I think it's, uh, just about right now. I can remember so, that we just missed that off the start line, but here we are waiting for Phil now to come up camera to camera two's right now. the course yep. towards the Heller hairpin. There's never a problem with the RX-7s digging up a bit of dust at the start line, that's for oh, sure. every time. Turkey <laughs> blimmin' things. 41.63 to the split. So let's see what time Phil Walker stops the clock at in the runoff. One oh seven point three seven for Phil Walker as the first time posted in the two wheel drive historic class. As the next car comes to the line, it's the Ford Escort of Derek Ason. Derek Ason. It's marked to Ford Escort. 2.4 litre engine in it these days, which is probably not that historic for a Ford Escort. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Away he goes. Derek off the start line. There's that lovely Escort sound. We haven't heard much of those Escort sounds this weekend, Grant. So I've just heard that Derek actually has got to the hairpin in a 40 second time before. So that's faster than Phil Walker did. Let's see what he can reach the hairpin in this time. Good exit out of the hairpin. 42.29. So I wonder if a little bit of that time was just getting off the start line here. He didn't give it too much of the jandal as you'd say as he got off the start line. Didn't want to break anything. So here he comes across the finish line. One oh seven five one. So Phil Walker, oh, Phil Walker was has got quicker. the benchmark. Goodness me! Oh, it just shows those split run times. Phil Walker. It was indeed those yeah. split times do translate to the downhill, particularly in the yeah. uh, with the two wheel drives. So Phil was faster to the split, faster to the bottom, and now it's up to Bert Murray to see if he can clinch. I want to ask you what Bert's been doing because we've got paper everywhere here. Looking, looking. Uh, Bert Murray, he's done a 107.50. So it's, it's so. <laughs> they're all thereabouts. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that in an escort. You can't do that in most cars. <laughs> so Bert Murray heading up to the hell of hairpin now. So 41 6 is the fastest to the hairpin. And. Uh, He's done a 107 and a 108, but he's got to do a 107 again or better because those two boys have caught up to him. So, 
41 16. He's on the button too. Oh, this is going to be so close this, in this class. This is so close, <laughs> folks. <laughs> Down to the finish line, Bert brings the Mazda RX 7 to stop the clock at 106 71. So he's done it. There is your class winner, ladies and gentlemen. Bert Murray, a 106 71. Second in class, Phil Walker with a 107.37 and Derek Ason, third in class with a 107.51. So, four more cars attempting the Winmax Brakes Ashley Forest Rally Sprint course and only two of them will continue off. So, on, so all things being equal and clean runs I think we know who the top two are all right but let's see how the battle between the Mitsubishi Mirage the uh, the Mitsubishi Mirage uh, sorry the Mitsubishi Evo and the sorry the two Subarus isn't it Subaru WRX of Garrett Thomas and the slightly older Subaru R, uh, Impressor of Matt Summerfield so Matt uh, certainly has plenty of experience of winning at this event. He's won it three times outright in the past and has also won the four-wheel drive rally car class as well. So he's done the minute a couple of times now, the minute. Can he actually bring it under the minute because he was one minute even last time? So can he get it into the 50s? As we wait for the first of the top four contenders to come to the start line. And another mention about the fantastic discount and gift offer that our live streaming partners, Brita Safety, are offering you until the end of September. So not too much time to skedaddle into 591 Horswell Junction Road in Hornby. But go and see the team at British Safety because when you pop in to get your new John Bull or Bloodstone footwear, mention Ashley Forest Rally Sprint and that's an immediate 15% discount off your purchase. Plus they will also give you another free gift with your purchase as well. So a very good offer there for British Safety. They specialise in screen printing, monogramming, with their great range of safety clothing, work clothing, corporate clothing and team wear to ensure that you and your staff are getting that branding out there. They're open from 7.30 in the morning till 5.30 each day at British Safety. They have all the sort of work wear you're likely to need, wet weather gear, high-vis clothing, disposable overalls, gum boots, work boots, slip-on, lace-ups. They even have women's uh, working footwear as well. And if you're looking for a fleece, a jersey, a jacket, a vest or a polo, they can supply those for you and screen print them up for you as well. So pop in and see the crew at Brita Safety. And don't forget that 15% discount off your new John Bull or Bloodstone footwear available until the end of September and a free gift with purchase as well. I can tell you a radio jock once. <laughs> You almost don't take a breath during that, Grant. <laughs> Alrighty, the course car. I think just going around and checking the course before the uh, the top four and the top two. So, there's one Hyundai coming around the course at the pointy end of the field. Well, there is. <laughs> yeah, we're all a and bit it's stunned by that, aren't we? But we are. But uh, the Hyundai has its brand new branch here in Rangiora as well, so nice to see them supporting the event and out with the course vehicle. Ah, indeed. indeed. So, just a little bit of checking going on at the finish line. So, Matt Summerfield will be the first to run off in the top four. And 
interesting talking to Sloane Cox about the rally cross, wasn't it? It was indeed. And the future of it in this country, and it's something that's often intrigued me, is to, it never really took off. Um, we had it down here in a pretty serious way, uh, Ruapuna had it, but the problem with the Ruapuna was its, its shingle base. Right. And it, when it cut up, it was very, very rough, and they didn't really like it. So uh, I'm not sure where a good location would be here. I know Timaru are keen to have one. Um, but Mystery Creek, like we were just saying before, is, to me is the logical place to ha- have it. It was. Perfect with the uh, uh, amphitheatre yeah. style. But with all the red tape and bylaws there, I would, I'm not sure how they get on, yeah. but it would be a wonderful idea to have something like that here. It would indeed. A lot of that part I of mean, that course, I think, has been built on there yeah. too, so I'm not sure if this and, full course still yeah. exists. But and, and seeing you know our chances of getting a WRC round again, look 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 remote, don't they? I mean, Very. we just haven't got the, the, the crunch or the numbers, and and frankly, uh, our government don't give a damn about it. No, um, they're all about one thing only. It's about boys and sailboats, hmm. and um, so rally cross could be a, could be a, an answer to something that motorsport was, couldn't it? Indeed. I mean, the yeah. rumour we hear is that to get around to the World Rally Championship these days you need to be putting down uh, a fee to the FIA of a million or more so yeah, I mean well, it just makes it so well, difficult for yeah, small but, countries well, like I mean, this. You might be able to correct me and I'm, I know we're talking to a wide audience here but my understanding was that they were close to getting it, they had it and they wanted government to underwrite it which meaning that if it fell over they, you know, they were going to underwrite it and they said no right. and you know when you hear that and when you know that from what I understand 1 in 10 people in Europe watch WRC I mean, you know what I'm coming to now, don't you? Exactly. Yeah. And well, I'm not anti America's Cup at all. I just think things are a bit unbalanced. That's a very fair comment, Lindsay. And, uh, oh gosh, yeah, I mean, the days of Rally New Zealand, uh, just memorable, the huge crowds that follow it down here, and the drivers. I mean, they talk about New Zealand having yeah. the best roads in the world. And, and Why wouldn't you take your best cars in the world to the best roads in the world? And you and I were privileged enough to, to be involved with a lot of, the, lot of those events. Indeed. So we're just waiting to see what is next on the program. And I think we just go straight to top four. Or top four. Or are we having? Uh, we might have the top. But sorry, the class four runoff yet. Uh, we haven't had that, which is Chris Hay, Jim Tennant, and Paul Mullen. I think it's after this. After this, is it not? According to my program, it's, Thank you, uh, Lindsay. it's top four, then there's the two-wheel drive, a limited top three final, Thank then you, the Lindsay. final. Alrighty. Yep. So still a good crowd here for the business end of the Winmax Breaks Ashley Forest Rally Sprint. Uh, it's just been such a great weekend the weather's held out beautifully uh, although it's clouding over and cooling off a little bit because um, blue skies weather i see we're forecasting uh, the southerly change that is coming over the country and uh, they are predicting the possibility of snow to low levels in the south island so, 500 um, meters on banks peninsula all righty which is which is nothing nothing but further south it might be a different story yeah, well, so yeah. <laughs> Whether our good folk from Gore and Invercargill get the rally cars home in time, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, <laughs> I can tell you a story about things like that too. <laughs> and, if, and, if, and if Barry Robinson's listening, I think he is, and a lot of you will know that Barry was a great competitor here many years ago and was in top four and finals quite regularly and uh, uh, used to stay with us. And we had one occasion when on the Sunday, uh, Sunday night and Monday, the weather was so bad at his place that he stayed the night and... We watched rally tapes on the Monday, and when it cleared, we took the kids for he took the kids for rides around the block in the rally car <laughs> until we thought that Mr. Mr. Plod wasn't far away. <laughs> uh, a special good afternoon, Barry, if you are listening to us down in the deep south. Of course, that name just so synonymous with Vauxhall Chevettes. Uh, it is indeed, <laughs> and this event too. Um, it's just uh, for the, the benefit of our live streaming viewers who might have come in to the elimination rounds this afternoon, we have talked about uh, how the events 
first started, so I don't think it hurts to recap again, Lindsay, that 1979 was the very first event, but not the course as we know it today. That was from 1980. Yeah, very true. The first one was the downhill run uh, on the road that we go up for, for this event now, but it started further up the road on Mount Grey Road, and it was won by Steve Millen and, and a works, uh, New Zealand works uh, back Chevette. And uh, from that point, uh, it was Tony Booth who was the, the pioneer of this, of this event, S- sat here one day and I was with him with a few other guys and hey, the, the natural place was, there's a loop here, it's got to be used. And the forestry, the General Forest Service owned it at that time and they were very, you know, they were happy to have it used. And Tony in his wisdom took off with his, with his uh, briefcase under his arm, went to Wellington, went to TVNZ and convinced them that, hey, you should televise this, which they agreed to, and they gave the club $40,000 for the privilege of it. And so that's how it all started. And, of course, the television coverage continued for many years, and uh, a lot of us who resided in the North Island in those days, that was our our weekend, our, we called it our Kiwi Bathurst weekend, because uh, we would sit down and watch the rally sprint uh, and uh, it was fantastic television viewing. Of course, also in those days, Lindsay, the, the road here was used a lot more by the logging trucks and became very hard. And then in some of the years more recently, when the road hasn't been quite so hard packed and, and basically the times crept out a wee bit again, and that's why the record's probably stood for so long. Yeah, I think you're right, um, Grant. That, that is right. Um, things have changed here a lot too uh, in surrounding areas. We've got housing very close by now. But also, these trees are for commercial purposes in the middle there. Now, I recall the time, I'm not sure whether you were living here then, when those trees were felled. That's, that's and right. for two or three years, we, it was so strange to be up there and there was just nothing around you. Correct. And this is the crop that's grown since then. So I'd say they mightn't be far away from being felled <laughs> now again. <laughs> So we're just waiting for the top four competitors to get ready to have a crack at the course one more time. And as we mentioned, the top four are Matt Summerfield, Garrett Thomas, Neil Webb and Alistair McRae as Matt Summerfield is the first of those to come up to the start line now. So here he is, Matt Summerfield. He's used to these elimination rounds and getting down to the business end of the day. So Matt Summerfield in the Subaru Impressa. This uh, car was originally uh, rallied when it was new by David Ayling. And the That's Summerfields true. sold yeah. their earlier model Impressa. Um, not Dave Ayling, uh, Brad Ayling. Brad Ayling, big yeah. pardon, son of Dave. Son of Dave, who won the 1990 New Zealand Rally Championship and, um, in a Mazda 323. Correct. I hope, Dave, if you're uh, watching here, I hope you're enjoying the coverage. So, Matt Summerfield, certainly one of the most spectacular drivers on the downhill run. Let's see how he, quick he can get the car to the top of the course this time. So, so, Matt got to the top of the hairpin last time at a 37.54. Another nice exit out of the hairpin. 37.24, again, a smidgen quicker. So maybe he's after that sudden minute run indeed. And <laughs> the impressive that is flying oh, well, down the hill. To, to do the one minute even. Wow. Round the finish and line. pushing. Absolutely tapped. Good 59, 6, 7, Matt Summerfield well, well done, Matt has Summerfield. cracked the minutes yeah. in the Subaru Impressa. Well done, Matt Summerfield. That was a ballsy run, Grant. <laughs> that was, that a, was a ballsy, ballsy run, run in that car. Now, well, that's the challenge that he's put down to Garrett Thomas. And the newer version, Subaru WRX STI. 
So I wonder if Dave's given this a bit more of a tickle up for this top four runoff. <laughs> we'll see. Because yes. as we said, Garrett's done an absolutely magnificent job here. Can he get his car into the 59s? He's done a one minute point nine one, which is eight tenths of a second slower than Matt Summerfield yeah, so did. There's, until, an even, of course, there's, he, uh, there's an even chance that he will. I would say. It's a 50-50 call. <laughs> indeed. The battle of the Subarus, old and new. The Garrett Thomas and Matt Summerfield. So for a lot of people coming to Ashley Forest, a new name for you guys, but uh, from what we've seen in rallying in the last two years since Garrett's taken over uh, driving a car, he's been absolutely spectacular. And that was a very, very good launch off the line for Garrett Thomas. Beautifully smooth, wasn't it? He was faster up to the hairpin than Matt Summerfield in the top eight runoff. Matt, and even faster than Matt did on this run, but it's a matter of whether he can do that and then be as fast as Matt downhill to eclipse that 59.67. So Garrett Thomas heads to the Heller hairpin. 37.08 last time. Nice tight exit. Thirty-seven oh nine. Last time was a thirty-seven oh eight. <laughs> wow. He's through Jennings and going to go through the, the dipper now. Round the finish line comes Garrett Thomas. Oh, ten even. 69, 59, 67. Who could have believed it? Absolutely identical to Matt Summerfield. It's <laughs> such amazing. Who <laughs> would have picked that? Amazing. Those two have been hammer and tong all day. I don't think we've ever, ever had that before. No. Not in a final situation <laughs> no. like this. 59, 67. That is incredible. Well done to both Matt and to Garrett. Now hats off to you for getting those cars under the minute. 59.67. Okay. Second fastest so far on the course this weekend is Neil Webb. Well, not, not in, the, in the runoffs rather, not on the course because obviously Hayden Padden was doing 55s. Uh, the best Neil Webb has done in the Mitsubishi Mirage is a 57.64. So his chance to win the event as he heads up towards the Heller hairpin for to make the top two. But of course, he's got to get through the course and do a sub 59 time to get to the top two. Oh, okay, six seven. Okay, so maybe not equal. We're hearing maybe six fifty nine six nine for Garrett. Well, he's tried very very hard in that run to the top four. Fifty seven twenty six for Neil Webb into the final. So 59.67, so we can now reconfirm, they have said that Matt Summerfield did a 59.67 and Garrett did a 59.69, so Matt Summerfield is at this stage third overall, depending on Alistair McRae having a good clean run and going under 59.67 to make the final.
So, Alistair McRae, of course, left-hand drive for this car, having been an ex-World Rally car Subaru Impressor, driven by Possum Bourne, now owned and maintained by the Vantage Group. Fabulous car, and great to have one of the an example of one of these cars in New Zealand. As a genuine World Rally car. Oh, indeed. And that's the fastest Subaru you're going to see here this weekend <laughs> as Alistair McRae heads up the course towards the hairpin. He did a 34.91 at the hairpin last time and looking good. I think this is another chip away, chip away run here, yeah, Lindsay. I do too. Beautifully round the hairpin. He has to slide it, he said. 35-1-1, so, so slower to the split. Here he comes, Alistair McRae. Fifty-five nine one. So a little bit slower than the time he set to get into the top eight, but fast enough to be comfortably the quickest, quickest here going into the top two. So that means the final is against Alistair McRae, and it is against Neil Webb, and two new names heading into the final here at the Ashley Forest Rally It Spring. is indeed, but we say goodbye to Matt Summerfield and uh, Garrett Thomas and say, well, well done, lads. M magnificent effort. <laughs> a podium for Matt, third overall, and Garrett, a fourth a overall. Very that incredible is a, a place. very, very good effort. Pretty chuffed. And, yep, she's a new final, group of finalists and uh, fantastic. And have just two hundredths of a second between Matt and Garrett for third and fourth shows you just how close the competition is here at the Winmac Breaks Ashley Forest Rally Sprint. Uh, perhaps not for, for Neil Webb now and Alistair McRae because uh, uh, a good second, uh, well over a second and a bit between them. Uh, how much more Neil can find in that car, you know, it'd be a big ask I would think to get it into a 55. Yeah. The end is nigh, folks. We just got uh, one more of the finals to come, which is the uh, two-wheel drive unlimited. Unlimited, and Chris Hay is the man to beat here. I suggest, indeed, and in that fabulous uh, the current record holder of, of the class. Yep, and the current record holder for two-wheel drive cars. And look, hey, we're going to have two Toyotas. <laughs> in the class because we've got Jim Tennant in the Altessa. Yes, indeed. <laughs> so two Toyotas against Paul Mullen, car number 35. And uh, that's the Datsun 1200 with the CA18 motor installed. So two Toyotas and a Datsun in the final of the two-wheel drive unlimited class. So the first to come up to the start line will be Paul Mullen and we can just see him in the back of the vision going up the uh, the road they use to warm the brakes and the tyres before they come up to the start line. So just while we wait for Paul to warm his brakes up, talking about brakes, we should mention Winmax brakes, the Japanese brake pad one of the leading brake products in the world, used by the Hyundai World Rally cars and the R5 teams as well. Many GT racing teams around the world use them. Hayden Padden has brought the Winmac brakes to New Zealand with Hayden, uh, with Padden Rally Sport, and uh, over 30 New Zealand rally competitors are now using those Winmac uh, brake pads to great effect. One of the best brake pads 
on the market for performance, driver feel, durability and for having lower temperatures. Hot brakes of course never something a driver wants to be no. uh, uh, faced with and because of the direct partnership that uh, Hayden and his team have with the factory they're able to offer these brake pads at a very good price much cheaper than anything else that is of a comparable product so Japanese brake pads Winmax supporters of the overall Ashley Forest rally sprint this year and also supporting our live stream coverage thank you to Hayden and the team and Winmax brake pads who along with Magnum, Import Parts, Carter's Tire Services, British Safety have made this live streaming throughout the weekend possible. And uh, just before we get into the, the business end, we must uh, say a great thanks to the whole Momac team. A crew of 14 are working away here on the Rally Sprint course this weekend to bring you these pictures live around New Zealand and around the world and by using Wi-Fi technology and Facebook platforms has opened this up to a whole new audience and a portable audience as well so yeah it's not a case of cutting your television around to be able to watch it these these days um, you watch it on your iPad on your phone as people we understand up and in, in the forest or at the spectator points are using their phones to watch the action that they can't see before it comes to them so uh, thanks to Momek and the team uh, for a tremendous, groundbreaking effort of bringing live rally sprint coverage multi-camera to you viewers. So, here goes Paul Mullen in the Datsun 1200 on steroids. Oh, that's what it sounds like, on steroids, all right. <laughs> So just checking the times that Paul's been doing over the weekend. Did the one fourteens? Um, Jim Tennant's been in the elevens, and Chris Hay, of course, is in another league again. So. On previous performance and time, you would suggest that Jim Tennant and Paul Mullen are fighting out for the minor money. So down comes Paul Mullen with the big wing on the back of the Datsun 1200. And a successful run for Paul Mullen. Let's see what he stops the clock at. 112-13. That's a good time for him this weekend, but not good enough to match anything that Chris Hay can produce out of that little Toyota MR2. And Jim Tennant has done 111s so far in the Toyota Altessa, which comes up to the line now. Formerly a circuit car. Let's change it to gravel spec and bought this car along to Ashby Forest along with the Nissan 240 RS that he also used in the historic uh, two-wheel drive class. Jim Tennant on the start line, car 34. Had lots of wheel spin all right for Jim Tennant in the Toyota Altessa. So two Toyotas and the Datsun in the unlimited two-wheel drive final. And of course the Altessa, a much bigger, heavier car than the little nimble MR2 that Chris Hayes managed to get around this course in 102s, 103s. Around the hairpin comes Jim Tennant from Christchurch in the Toyota Altessa. 4507. So, so, whoa, maybe. 
maybe he's slower this time than Paul Mullen. Let's see what he stops the clock at as he comes over the finish line. One thirteen oh oh for Jim Tennant. So that's two seconds away from the best time he's produced in that car this weekend, which was a one eleven. So that now puts Paul Mullen with the fastest time to Jim Tennant, with just Chris Hay to come in the mid-engined MR2. The man who holds the overall two-wheel drive record here on this Ashley Forest Rally Sprint course at a 102. He's won the unlimited two-wheel drive class here for the last 10 events. And I would suspect if the car holds together and Jim drives it well, this will be victory number 11. Chris Hay heading uphill to the Heller Hairpin. And he's done a 102, not as fast as his record time this year, just missed that. But uh, I would think that he'd really want to have a crack at his own record and see if he can lower that a little bit more if he can. What does he get to the hairpin in? Thirty-eight oh one to the hairpin. That's this it. could be a new two-wheel drive record. What's it going to be? One oh two six one. So faster for the split, but couldn't quite get it on the downhill one. So his own record stays intact that he set last year at 102.15 and that was a 102.61 Well done Chris, another great weekend for you buddy An outstanding time for Chris Hay So superb time for Chris Hay So now comes the big finale. This is it. This is it. The top two. So it's down to Alistair oh. McRae and Neil Webb. Are we going to have our first overseas competitor to win the event? That's what it's shaping up. Well, if you went to the TAB to put your money down, you'd probably have to say he'd be favourite. I would. But we all know what's been happening. <laughs> we do. Each of our other top uh, three seeds, if you like, uh, Sloan Cox and Hayden Patton have had mechanical issues and that has sidelined them for moving through these later elimination rounds. So let's see also whether or not Alistair McRae will have a crack at Sloan Cox's outright record which sits at 54.96 in his hill climb Evo 8 special. Of course, uh, that car runs a complete space frame chassis and was built to go to the Pikes Peak hill climb in America by Andrew Hawkswood. So, is the record safe? Is it not? Alistair has been just under a second so far outside that record so he'll need to get at least another second quicker if he wants to crack that record and not only perhaps leave here as the as the winner for this year but also perhaps put his name into the record books. So we do have to thank our sponsors once again for the live streaming coverage as we get down to this grand final. 
the Winmax brake pads, the Magnum Group from Christchurch and Dunedin, import parts. Thanks, Paul Carter from Christchurch. Uh, for Shane from Carter's Tire Service here in Rangiora that has two branches in High Street and also on Flaxton Road for cars and commercials. And British Safety, without their support, we would not be bringing the live pictures to you over the weekend. Grant, just British Safety, it's not brighter safety. Could well be. Yeah, I, I just, just, yeah. Someone said to me out there before, is it not brighter? As in bright, so. I see, right. But One of those. Yeah, um, and anyway, uh, yes, thanks to them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Brighter safety. So the weather conditions have held here. Just a little bit overcast as we get into the final. What's our current uh, conditions here at the moment? Just one moment. Ashley Forest, here we are. Currently 13 degrees here at the moment. It's going to be a bit cool tonight, Lindsay. It's getting down to... Uh, Four degrees, maybe. No, that'll be no, tomorrow. Eight, eight down to eight, and then and dropping to, overnight to, to fours, threes, tomorrow. twos. I see as the week goes on. So, um, to get the duvet back out of the cupboard. Pick up the speed next week, indeed. Radio, folks, here we go. The grand finale. Indeed. They're warming up in the background here. And we also need to acknowledge wild trailers from Flaxton Road in Rangiora who have supplied us with our home here for the weekend for the broadcasting team. Uh, the production crew based inside the fabulous wild trailers horse float and uh, also our commentary position just by the start line. But these certainly are beautiful horse floats and uh, they do a range of horse floats including the stallion, the ocean and the racing. I presume we've got the racing version here, one would suspect. I would think this is the <laughs> racing version, all right. Absolutely fabulous horse trailers. If you're in the market, folks, for a horse float, then do come and have a look at this brand new wild trailer horse float, which is here as our base for the Momac production crew. You'll find wild trailers at 300 Flaxton Road in Rangiora, and you can hop online and have a look at the versions they have available. It is wild trailers, W I L D, wildtrailers.co.nz to see the full range of horse floats that they manufacture here in North Canterbury. So, yes, indeed, the whole weekend done comes down to the final two runoff. And of course, every other time they set on the course this weekend doesn't count, it only counts in the final. So uh, to look back and back, see the fastest time that's been recorded over the weekend, uh, it would be uh, Hayden Patton, of course, uh, getting down at that very low 55 and having a sniff at the record. But uh, Hayden's Hyundai didn't survive to make it into the top two runoff. 55-24. 55-24 for Hayden. So he could almost touch it, but couldn't quite claim yep. it. Alistair McRae is this, going to, is this going to be the time it wins this year's event? So is Alistair... TAB is now closed. <laughs> all, all bets are off. <laughs> all bets are off. As he waits on the start line with the media doing uh, television interviews, which will be broadcast in the programme that will be screened later. Oh, and about... Two months' time? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, to be fair, it'll be in a month's time or so, won't it not? 
I presume they've sold it to TV3 uh, Sunday afternoon uh, sport, uh, motorsport program. <laughs> Alistair McRae having his final crack here at the Winmax Ashley Forest Rally Sprint. He's keen to get a trifecta here. He's won the uh, Rob Millen's um, um, hill climb up in uh, Ha He's won the Race to the Sky in, in, in Queenstown. And this is what he wants is the trifecta of the Ashley Forest Rally Sprint. Did a 35-1-1 to the split last time. What can he do in the final? Slides it in, as he says. Oh, that was a good, that was a good uh, manoeuvre through that hairpin then. 34.02, hey. He's got a sniff he's, of that record. He has got a sniff of it. He is he's motoring. Honking. Five, five, three, five. So, no record for Alistair McRae, but that is a very, very good time. 55, three, five. And again, we said the bad Alistair all day chip away, chip away. Every round's got quicker. He has. Just by that little bit. Um, so, there it is. He's gone four tenths of a second faster. Yeah. But the record is safe. So how far off the record was he? About um, about four tenths, basically. Four tenths of a second. <laughs> four tenths of a second. So here comes Neil Webb, who, looking at his previous times all weekend, would need something of a miracle to get a 55 time out of this yeah. little Mitsubishi Mirage with Evo running gear. Got nothing to lose, though. He's got nothing, nothing to lose. Nope. Apart from, apart from his car, if he bends it, but I... Away goes Neil Webb. And in the top four runoff, in fact, Neil was faster than Alistair to yep. the split. He did a 34.91, which is still quicker than what... Uh, what did Dallas do to the split this time? I think no, I think he did get to a 34 as well, didn't he? Yes, he did. So um, close to the top, it's all in the downhill run. That was quick. That was good. Everything will be wound up to the max this time. 34.68. Hold on to your hats, folks. He's coming down the hill at a great rate of knots. Through the finish line. That was very quick. Fifty-six oh four. Alistair McRae, congratulations. Our first yeah. international winner here of the Winmax Breaks Ashley Forest Rally Sprint. So there we are, just over... Well, under a second between the two of them, but a great time for Neil Webb to get a 56.04. A brilliant effort by Neil Webb. But Alistair McRae goes into the record books as the winner and the first international winner of the 2018 Winmax Breaks Ashley Forest Rally Sprint. So, as he puts his name in the record book, Let's hope that that's uh, a good enough reason for Vantage to consider bringing this car back next year so to have a crack because it's the first time we've seen this car at Ashley Forest and let's hope it will not be the last. So congratulations Alistair McRae. So that concludes our live coverage here of the Ashley Forest Rally Sprint. Uh, a special thanks again to our sponsors, Winmax Brake Pads, the Magnum Group, Import Parts, Carter's Tire Service, Brighter Safety, and uh, thank you to our 14-man crew 
and lady crew of the Momac socialising media team who came up with the concept of putting this event together live so that all of you viewers around New Zealand and the world could witness the action as it happens. It's been a superb and successful experiment, you would say, for the Momac team as Alistair McRae comes up to accept the trophy. Grant, I'd like to congratulate Grant and, and, his, and what he's done. And this is truly pioneering ground, and I really hope this really takes off now. And, and the guys here that worked on the job with him, it's just fantastic. You know, and for old fellas like you and I who struggle with modern technology, it's actually blowing my mind away of what's been achieved here. So, great stuff, guys. Well, and all the best. Yeah, and let's hope it continues for many years, because by the time we, we're in our Zimmer frame and can't yeah. make it here, we'll be able to live stream it and watch it as well. And we'll be able to claim <laughs> that we were involved with the very first one. So, on behalf of the... Momac team, um, we're just going to shoot a camera, I think, across to the presentation. Are we just heading a camera across to the presentation? Yep. Well, there we are, the uh, presentation of the winners and uh, the two finalists, two completely different style of motor car there, and our first international winner, as we've mentioned. So now the presentations have been completed, and we've had the uh, the interviews from our top two competitors. It's time to wrap up the live streaming coverage here this afternoon. Thanks once again to the Momac team. Thank you, Lindsay, for joining us in the commentary. Uh, you were here for the very first one in 1979. <laughs>
and I'm still uh, here. it's a pleasure to have you back and uh, let's hope we uh, can do it all again next year to all you viewers around New Zealand and around the globe thanks for joining in and uh, joining the coverage we hope you've enjoyed it and we wish you from North Canterbury a very good afternoon <laughs>